Hey, welcome to the doghouse on ntnradio.com, but we're also doing this on YouTube. Uh, this is our MotoGP wrap-up. They were they did their first round there in Qatar, uh, the La Salle circuit, uh, one of my favorites. It's the only night race there. I mean, I love it. It's a it's a pretty good uh, pretty good time. Uh, looks phenomenal. It's definitely a list a race on my bucket list. First, we're going to talk a little bit about the uh, Moto2 race, which had uh, Jonas Folger winning. Not really sure I saw that coming. Javier uh, Simone came in. Uh, Simone? Yeah, I guess Simone. Came in uh, second, and uh, Thomas Luthi rounded out the podium with Alex Rins making a late late charge to try and get on it. Uh, I thought it was a, a really good bang-up race. Uh, you could throw a blanket over the top, about seven or eight guys there. It was it was pretty close. It was a lot of good racing there. Uh, but there were none of the common names that I was expecting to see on the podium there. Warren, talk a little bit about the crashes. Well, Rabat and Lowe's are your main reason why the, you know, the race was good, but it would have been better with those guys in it. Uh, a lot of people were claiming that uh, the tire changes, and Ken's going to talk about that in a moment, that some of the, the uh, tire compounds were kind of screwy from going from the practice into the final races. Ken, you want to jump in there? Yeah, well, I, I for, for some reason that I don't think we'll ever, we're ever going to know, uh, Sam Lowe's, uh, who, Sam Lowe's, who had been the fastest uh, in all the practice sessions, H him and Zarco were fighting out all the practice sessions. Rabat was trailing third or fourth in all the practice sessions, but Rabat put in more laps than anybody else. That's what he does. But um, Lowe's was just outrageously fast and uh, using the hard compound. Right, and then and for then, whatever and, reason... And then for whatever reason that nobody seems to know, just before race time, they went and put on the medium compound tire on there, and his bike was... had problems from the very, very beginning. And he even said that. That he was... the bike was jittery, it was all over the place, and then... And when it you didn't, it didn't, it, he wasn't. He didn't. He wasn't out there long. No, he he, he wasn't out no. there long. And, and uh, about three laps. And, yeah, and, and Robot was out there and, about the and same. And he racked. He was able to get the bike back up and uh, and uh, and get get back into the you know into the pits with the bike. But there was just there was at that point it was you know they they finally pulled it back into his pit stall and that was it. That's the end of it when that happens. And then Rabat crashed out when uh, I don't remember which racer it was cut him off. R and Rabat lasted longer. Yeah. Uh, in, in, not too much in, longer. Yeah, not a lap. Yeah. Not a lap. Was not it only a lap? lap? I thought it was, it was only a lap. lap. Believe, Believe it or not, it was. It seemed longer, but it was only a lap. Yeah, it was. I, I could just hear Olaf's voice in my head at that point after after <laughs> after, saying, after, no. after, after Lowe's went down. After Lowe's went down. Yes. Because he said you don't pick Ken's picks. Never right? pick Ken's. Picks. Never pick Ken's picks. And so he picked Rabat, and I said to him, that was bad karma. Lo and behold, it only took about a lap for that karma to kick in. And yeah, Rabat, Rabat went down. And then, by and far, the, the top three guys in the race, uh, the top three guys of the weekend, Rabat, Zarco, and well, Lowe's. Let's talk about Zarco, who had who had uh, shifting problems. Right, but, but, Zar yeah. but of the top three guys that were in there, Zarco, Lowe's, and Rabat, once Rabat and uh, Lowe's went out of the race, Zarco was... He By and far, he controlled the race. He controlled point. the race after that, right up to the point that he had a mechanical problem with the shift. <laughs> so he linkage. couldn't get out of second gear or whatever gear he was stuck in, <laughs> and, and he just got pounded. I mean, on just a heartbreaking away. thing, but but definitely he planted some seeds in people's minds for this. Yeah, season. he's definitely he definitely opened my eyes. I wasn't sure where he was going to be this year. You know, I, I kind of was. At times, I think Zarco shows great potential. In the past, and other times, I thought, nah, I don't know about. Well, this I tell guy. you what, I I thought when he was on the Caterham last year, he did more with that bike than probably. You, I mean, yes. dramatically better than than unfortunately, Mister Heron was doing yes. on the bike. But then, <coughs> excuse me, Caterham, you know, goes bankrupt, and uh, he's he he ends up looking for a ride. He's, but he dominated the race from from really even before yeah, well, he, Lowe's and Rabat he, crashed. Out. He was he going was back and forth. Going. He he literally was going back and forth. Yes. Yeah. Um. In practice, and especially in practice, and who could break lap records between him and Sam Lowe's all during practice, and then, and then, and then in qualifying, the question in, in qualifying in my mind was who was going to get the pole? Was it going to be Zarco or was it going to be Lowe's? Yeah. When you know, I, and then I thought we were looking at a great race, and I, I, I think you have to look at it at the standpoint that Lowe's, you almost have to say, okay, Lowe's and and. Uh, 
and 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 Rabat having the problems, that's probably not going to happen that often. Although Lowe seemed to have a few a few falls last year, but why in God's name did they change that tire? Why in God's name? It's just, yeah. I, you know, I, I think Lowe's. I think Lowe's would have dominated that race if they had the hard tire on the back. That's, maybe, that's my maybe, opinion. Maybe you know a couple names that didn't make that didn't make a lot of noise that everybody was expecting before the race. A lot of, heard a lot of hype on Alex Marquez. Uh, he came in eleventh. Right. I don't think he was. He was a non-factor. Non-factor. He was. He, he wasn't that. any discussed at he all. He was a non-factor in practice and qualifying. Yeah, he, he really was. Uh, and Miko Calio and Sandro Cortese, I thought, were guys who I expected to be a little higher, but they they just weren't. Uh, they just couldn't get there. And Alex Rins, I thought, had a pretty good race. He was coming at the end. A- Alex Rins had, a, had had I think a good race, but you got to remember everything that happened in that race. And this is no knock on Jonas Folger. I think Folger actually he looked good. He did look. He, good. he looked good in some of the practice sessions and in qualifying. But let's be honest: if it wasn't for the three top guys going out, he would be a fourth place guy. We would not be talking about him that, on a podium. That, that's right. right. And Rins wouldn't have been as high. And yeah, yeah and Cortez that would have been as high. That would have moved Calio so, back to ninth. How? how can, when was the last time you remember the top three guys all going out in a race? Uh, I can't. I can't I ever. Can't. I can't ever think of the top three guys uh, all going out in one race. So uh, unless it was a wet race, maybe right. there's been a maybe wet a race. wet race. But I I right. can't even remember then where where the where the top three that, guys. That's did. not going to happen again. So the takeaways from this race has to be Zarko's gotta, fast. G- give Zarco more respect. Yes, definitely. And Sam Lowe could win any of these races when you find a good setup that works really well. Stop screwing with it. Tell yeah. your team that. <laughs> if it's if not I, broke, don't fix if, it. If I was him and it was the team's decision to do that, I would have gone back and raised ro- holy hell. Yeah, I'd have thrown stuff. The fastest bike at the fastest bike at Qatar in Moto Two, they shouldn't have been screwing with. That's right. I agree. Put a cover that. over Unless, and lock it down. Even, even even you know because you got to figure the fastest bike guys are going to follow your tire choice. So even if you were worried about your tires not coming in, uh-huh. other guys would have. Followed well, he, he, here was the logic. No, because he was the only person. Everybody else in the race had the hard rear. Here was the thought, and this was it was a gamble. It yeah. was purely a gamble. I put on the, the the I put on the the medium soft tire on there. I I'm going to use that tire up quick, but I'm going to get so far ahead. Right. I got a fast bike. I'm going to get so far ahead at the beginning of the race that when that tire comes off. I'm going to be. I'm gone. I, I'm gone. I'm yeah. so far ahead. It's not going to. I'm matter. stopping for coffee. Not going to matter. The problem was he didn't get the chance for that to happen. No, he didn't. The problem was is that on his bike and that setup that that was not the best. Clearly, it, was, it wasn't the best traction situation for him. And I think whether he had over pushed the tire for it, heated up or not, well, he enough tra- He had essentially trained all week on those hard tires. Yeah, all, all, and then how all many week. laps did he do on a soft tire? Any at all? He might, he might have done some. They might they might have at some point had it on there. Where it was um, actually on the track or where it was like laying on the side <laughs> just spinning next but to it. But it, it clearly, he his best times were all set with a hard tire. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so yeah, it was I, poor decisions. That, 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 that was a really – I've seen some bad decisions. That was amongst the worst I've seen in a yep. long time. And uh, their their next race along with MotoGP is obviously going to be in Coda, which is a totally different – Completely different track. Completely different track. So there will be a lot to talk about. We're going to talk about that a little bit next week. Uh, preview since they have the week off and stuff, and we'll, we'll do our preview of Coda next week. Uh, now switching it up, we'll go to the big boys, uh, MotoGP, the the Grand Prix, the the, the big the big guys, uh, you know, the the ones you go to watch, and uh, a lot of surprises in that race too. Um, all weekend long, the Ducatis were fast, and you know me, I've always made the joke Ducatis Italian for seventh place. I'm I'm eating a little bit of crow this week. Um, Normally, I don't give a lot of credit to practice times and all that kind of stuff because I think the good guys are tanking it. And I don't really care where Rossi qualifies. I always think he can be a factor when he wants to be. Um, and the Ducatis came out, and they were they were dominant. They, the, Ducati was on the pole. I can't even remember the last time a Ducati was on the pole. I mean, what, what are we talking, 06? It, it's probably close to that. So, uh, uh, you know, uh, Valentino Rossi came out there. And battled a, t- a tough race and battled right to the end to, to squeak away the win. And when I say squeak, I mean we're talking under two tenths of a second. Two Ducatis rounded up the podium. I can't remember the last time two Ducatis were on the podium. Uh, it's been a while. Uh, Andrea Deviciosa and Andrea Inone, who everybody affectionately calls Crazy Joe, uh, rounded out the podium. Where And then you had uh, Lorenzo and Marquez made a great charge from the back. 
I mean, at one point he was actually last in the race and worked his way all the way up to fifth. I, I saw uh, on a post-race show he did the final laps of the race, you know, about the final 11 laps of the race, almost a, a minute faster than the whole rest of the field. He was hauling. Um, some of the other guys, Pedrosa, Crutchlow, they had a couple little incidents early and stuff. So uh, Crutchlow had that incident with Mark Marquez. He, he raced back to a seventh. Pedrosa, Pedrosa just had... Uh, I mean, for a little while, he was up there. Ken was right. The Suzuki's were not that strong. I, I was expecting a little bit more. Alicia Spargo came out after the fact and said, you know, they got the setup right now. They just got to work on the power. Uh, Ken, why don't we talk about Ducati, which was the big surprise of the weekend, I think. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what's it was that big of a surprise. I mean, Ducati has been extremely strong in the uh, preseason practice and testing. Um you know, we we talked on on the doghouse a lot about you know the power of this GP15 bike, and Marquez is he kind of Marquez kind of went back and forth between my real competition is the Yamahas and this weekend him saying that he thought the the Ducatis might might be some something to watch. I think this settled that question. I think the Ducatis are the primary competition. I, I, I don't know about that. I, you know, I don't. I don't know about that either. I don't yeah. know about that because we don't know from one race whether or not the Ducatis will be as strong at another track. Because Ducatis have one main strength. Their one main strength is straightaways. Uh, so they, they have should power. be good at Coda. They should be good at. They should be good at Coda. The problem is that if you watch that race carefully this week, every Rossi, time they got into the twisties, Rossi pulled out. Yeah, or Lorenzo, then, or, or, whoever, or Lorenzo, whoever yeah. would get away, and then Davizioso would have to catch back up again, and he would, yeah. and he would pass him, and there was a ridiculous amount of passing, but there is no question that the Ducati is for real. The There's Ducati no, is not a joke, and, and they got they got a I think a great rider for that bike in Davizioso, and I and actually I think probably you know Iannone is uh, is a really good choice for the stable mate for him too. The just that bike is way better than the than the bike that Rossi ever saw when he was there, or, or Nicky Hayden, or yeah, Nicky Hayden. Hayden ever had when they were there. So, and I was I was glad to see Dovey. I I felt bad for Dovey when Honda cut him. Well, they cut a, they, cut, cut, they cut, cut a bike. Yeah, they cut a bike and right. they cut him. Essentially, they cut him. Well, in and right, and we'll talk about that later. But they, they probably made the they chose the wrong piece of person to cut. That I, well, we said that right three years ago when, or two years ago when it happened. Right. Uh, so that's that's kind of I always felt bad for uh, Dovey about that, and I was glad to see him battling for the lead. It's been a while for him, and I, I was good to see it, glad to see that. Uh, a couple of guys com- made some statements after the race. Uh, that I thought was kind of good, and then Ken made a statement a- after the race also that I would like to talk a little bit about. Uh, but first, first let's talk about Jorge Lorenzo and the famous "My helmet fell apart." Yeah, you know, I do. We believe it. I I absolutely don't. I don't either. I mean, he came in fourth and he was battling in the fourth position. It was not like, oh my God, it blocked my view and I backed way off. It was like, oh my God, it blocked my view and I lost. A second. Well, here, here's what I think happened. Okay. I think what happened was that Jorge Lorenzo used up his tires fighting to be I, I agree. I don't think there's, there's any question that. about that. He had to use every bit of tire that he had in order to be able to hold off to Viciosa and to make the passes on the corners and things like that. So when time came, he, he just he had poor management of tires and didn't want to admit that he basically had screwed up. And, and Rossi, Rossi did it. Rossi had the hard tire. Yep. Rossi had the harder compound tire, and that paid every, off and everybody end. knew that Rossi would have more tire left at the end. And it's possible that he had a little more tire left than the Ducatis, but apparently not much. And and Rossi had fallen all the way down to tenth at, at early in the race. Right. And he about he about he sliced through the field, and he had he had to work at a lot of parts. I I tell you right. what, when Rossi was coming through the field, I was shocked at Yanni Hernandez's performance. Was yeah. that De- definitely? I mean, he did on that Premac Ducati. He was he was tough to pass. He was fast, and and it was not he was tough to pass because he was blocking you. He was tough to pass because he was all an ass. Yeah, an- another GP15. Yep, and and I'm just saying, I I was a little shocked that that I'm talking about Yanni Hernandez. On yeah, I, I think that you're the 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 Ducati is for real. Yeah, there's there's no joke joke about that. No. 
Speaking of your Ducatis for real, Ken, you had an interesting, we call them conspiracy theory Ken for a reason. Yeah. Yes. Ken, lay, lay me this, lay on our listeners, our watchers now. The latest conspiracy. Well, I was watching, I was watching the last few laps of the race there and in his underwear on his couch throwing things and uh just giving a visual and, and uh yeah we put a picture of that can we chris, can we, do that? <laughs> chris throw um, a picture <laughs> we we um please don't i was watching the the last couple laps of the race and i was looking at it and i thought hmm davisioza was giving him a little bit too much room coming out of the corners a couple times i noticed and i thought he really wants to be as close as possible so when he hits that main straightaway that this, the power of the Ducati was there's was no way Rossi could do anything about it. There's no See, way I he would overtake him. See, I thought his tires had used up and he couldn't hold the turns. It, it could be that. It could be that. Well, the Ducati was not as good on the turns as the Ducati to begin and with. That's what I thought. To begin with, it was it wasn't, but it had so much overwhelming power coming out of the turns that you know, and on the straightaways that it could it could make up for that. I was watching the end of the race there, and and it's this is purely conspiracy theory, and I'm not saying this is actually my belief of what happened, but I put this out there on Twitter the other night because you want to you know, hate tweets. Yeah, well, that's right, and and because <laughs> there's so there's so much evidence now in this past week of the strength of the Ducati and the fact that it made it through a race, which they had not known that they yeah. didn't, they didn't know if it was going to be able to make make a race lane. They had had very little practice prior before coming to uh, Qatar. But all the I, I actually thought that there's a possibility that Ducati did not want to win that race. And everybody says, oh, no, no, these are racers. They want to win races. They do everything they can. And, yeah, that that may or may not be true. And I wasn't watching DeVicios' board at the end there. But everybody's got to realize one thing. There's a couple advantages that Ducati has in this race. Yes. That if they win a couple races, they lose. Yep. You know, they win a couple races and all their open class benefits go away. Yeah, the the fuel. So, would you want them so if the fuel, the tire Ty, choices, the tire choices, and the fuel? I think are the big ones. right? Those are the two big ones. So fuel right, capacity, right? Because right, you, if you can tune for a couple more liters, you can get a lot of more power out of yep. that out of that motor. So, would they want to give those up so early in the season, or would you keep that in your back pocket, get your points, score, get your seconds, thirds, you know, in, in the first half of the season? Get your wins after the first half of the season. When if you lose your open class, at least you pocketed. You know what I'm saying? If you do it early in the season, then you lose all those advantages. They right, have and that. then you lo- you fall yeah, out. I, away, I, you I, fall away in the points. It's a good conspiracy. Yeah. Yes, you know when you said it, I thought, oh, Ken's into the bottle of, right. you know, he's into some bottle and he's <laughs> yes, drunk and he's just right ranting now. and raving on Twitter. But then, I, and which is at Doghouse Radio, right? Uh, but then I started thinking about it and I thought, you know, a Ducati last year, the Ducati ran. Fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth—a mm-hmm. lot of times. Mm-hmm. And if you give up the advantages you have, you could fall back to that. Not saying for sure, but there's the possibility. And then that takes you out of contention. It takes you off the podium. But if you do yeah. tank it a few times, and if he did, if he did do that, well, I would say I would very, say he tanked it. No, I, I, I would, would say, say he tanked, tanked it. But, but, saying, but if that was a consideration, he still raced Rossi hard at the end. They, it was. I close. didn't say he didn't race Rossi hard. I just thought that he was giving. He, he needed to be on Rossi's tail going into the curves because he knew Rossi was going to pull a little bit ahead coming out of the turn. So he had to be where at, at a cert, a couple bike lengths at, at the most coming out of the turn so he could catch up on the straightaway. He was doing that with Lorenzo most of the race. At the end, whether it's his tires gone away, which it could be, or or he wasn't pressing as hard, it's... It's just a thought. It's just a thought. You know, I'm not it's saying... It's something to throw out. I like it. it. Yeah, if I, it I, happens again at Coda... And then we can start really putting some and weight Coda on the I, I, Coda's I would a agree. good test because agree. that's a big, long straightaway yes. there. Yes. And last year, even with the Ducatis not being a great bike, last year they were the fastest on the straightaway. Yeah. yeah. So that that's going to be a good test. They're going to crank out big speeds there. If they were doing yeah. 218... They were doing 218 in Qatar. Qatar. Right. They should be 220 or more. At, oh, I would say every bit of that. And, and I mean, they're. Going I to thought be, they were a little faster than that at Qatar. Actually, I thought they had some straightaway speeds in, in, in the 220s. Uh, I, that, I was really hoping that Marquez was going to catch them because of the charge he's made. Because that would have been really nice to see how, yeah, how he ran against the, those Ducatis. You know the what? I think I think MotoGP is one of those things where if you get all the way to the back and you charge away the front, we saw we we talked about Dane Westby doing that. I will tell you that in MotoGP, there's not much he, left. Of no, there's no tires left. He had he. I'm you know I'm surprised. I mean, he, he struggled to get past Yanni Hernandez too. Yes, it, I mean Yanni Hernandez was he was a blocker back there. Right. I mean he was and and you could tell because he didn't start falling off till the very end of the race where his tires obviously went away. 
before I want to get in, before we get into the last big topic, I want to talk a little bit about the Doghouse World Superbike MotoGP pool that we have. Uh, if you're interested in joining, shoot an email to phil at ntnradio.com. We'll, we can still hook you up, although you're going to be a little bit behind. But we do run a points pool. Uh, we did have a little bit of a lead change. One of our leaders fell from grace. Uh, we had a lot of guys who took Rabat and Lowe's in, uh, yeah. in Moto2 and I think scored that a was bunch one of, of those. zippies. Rabat and Lowe's. You don't mean Rabat. Oh, Rabat yes. or Lowe's. And, and or Lowe's in Moto2. Not and. Yeah, or. Well, well, I said <laughs> a lot of guys took Rabat and Lowe's. I had Lowe's. Rabat. And well, there were a, lot of, a, lot, a lot of people have Rabat. Yeah, there I were mean, two guys with Zarco, so actually... So just about everybody did. Let me score tell you points. something. I hit, thumbs up. Thumbs to the up guys to the that pick Zarco. To Carl C is, and uh, Matt B. I'll tell you what. You got to that that. I mean, he you had the it, balls and it, you did, the it points. didn't work out. It's kind of heartbreaking. It didn't work out for him picking Zarco. But I tell you what. You know, hey, Zarco was out in the lead, and I thought, wow, there's going to yeah. be a whole bunch of zeros and two twenty fives. <clears throat> I thought that was going to be insane. Yeah. Uh, they had the balls and could have got the points. And then, and then in uh, the MotoGP race, uh, Marquez dominated the picks. One person did have Rossi. Thank God he was one of the Zarco peoples. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> and the other Zarco guy had Marquez, so they weren't a big scorers. But uh, did any we, did anyone get the um, Moto Two winner? No, we had nobody. So. Nobody got full. No, I, I can't imagine anybody I, picking. If full. somebody had had that, that would have been out of left field, and I would have said there's a fix in. Well, the only people <laughs> that, that scored any points you're saying are the ones that picked Zarco. Yeah. Right, everybody else had had a big fat zippy, yeah. and then in Moto GP we had a bunch of guys. We had uh, two, four, five, five Rossi picks. Uh, just about everybody else had Marquez. One person had Lorenzo. So there was a little bit of change at the top. Um, I, I feel for the person that picked Lorenzo. Well, he did better than the person who picked Marquez. No, anybody? I, no, I feel sorry for the guy that picked Lorenzo. Watching him leave oh. the race so much and then basically <laughs> give up at the end. Yeah, that, that's true. saying. Hey, uh, let me let me break my helmet after the thing. Uh, I'm gonna put something in front of my eye. Uh, so at the top of the pool, Hawkeye and rookie Kristen have taken the lead uh, all by themselves. Uh, some of the everybody else fell back. I took the lead for the show. Uh, I pulled ahead of Warren. Ken, you're still struggling at the bottom. I you're, didn't. I didn't get rough. off the bottom. You are you are off. You are still at the bottom. You're at the bottom. You're at the bottom of the pack. I, I, I don't get it. I figured everybody scored a little points. Right, and that's what kept you at the bottom is is that everybody scored a little well, points. I, I got some points. You got eleven, and most of the field got eleven. Oh, okay, that's so why. You, you didn't really change all that much. Yeah. Uh, I I I took one of the biggest jumps up because I had the win. Uh, you, you know, the people with the win jumped up. The rest of right. you guys just kind of all faltered right. around. So if you want to get into the pool, it's kind of fun. We, we do a lot of trash talking. We have a Facebook group. We have a couple other things going with it. Uh, and then we have something that could potentially affect the entire rest of the season with Pedrosa's announcement after after the race. Only a few hours after the race, Danny Pedrosa came out and said, I didn't do too well because my arm pump's bothering me, and pretty much I'm going to get it done. I'm going to get arm pump surgery done and sit out the rest of the season. He didn't say that. Wow, well, that's kind of what the gist of it is. I thought the gist of it was no, the doctors wouldn't operate. That's what I got as well. He's that's arms already been operated on for arm pump, and they basically told him. I think he's just taking it easy. Well, I, I thought he he'd found somebody. I think I, he's done. You think he's done? I think he's done. Has in retired or just out? For well, the season? he's no, he's not retired. He's going to take. He, my guess is he'll take. He'll he'll take. I thought he'd found pro somebody. Pro to probably do it. two or three stops off. Get back on the bike, and if he has the same problem with our pump, he, he, he will he will retire. Uh, who no, was? he said he'd been scouring the world looking for a doctor. Maybe he will find somebody. I thought you know, they I got those doctors I, like on The Simpsons. You, you know what? I was going to say there is always <laughs> South America. Doctor Nick. Yeah, Doctor Nick. You can always find some. He, I'm sure he. <laughs> Doctor Nick. Doctor Nick. Yeah, I'm sure they can find somebody that will do the operation. I, I thought I there's read... a reason why the other doctors are saying no. Because they're good. They're, they're the reason they're saying no is probably because. The way they, what they do with that arm pump surgery has already been done, and trying to redo that surgery to try and it's, it has to do, it's a compartment syndrome where blood right. gets trapped in your forearm. There's, there's risk associated with further going in on that surgery in there that he may well, have nerve issues, like he, may, he may be done. And they, they said just let it go. Hopefully it's going to, but the problem is that maybe. I don't think it heals itself. Yeah, maybe he has right too much of that. Yeah. Um, it, it's, <laughs> No, I thought I, they could be like Rocky. You remember how cut the eye, cut the eye, yeah, and, and cut the arm. You know, just give it a slice. Arm pump surgery, the works or it doesn't. 
Yeah. And if it doesn't, you don't really have a lot of choices after that. So uh, that leads to speculation time. Well, there's definitely at least we we know at least at a minimum there's one stop that they need a rider for the uh, one Pedroza's bike. And uh, who who do we got in our spec? I was throwing out all kinds of names on Twitter just for fun. Well, the obvious ones are the satellite teams. The, you know, see, you I know, don't got, agree with that. No, that is the obvious choices. The reason is is that Hondas, and, and that's the experience of all of them, is much more likely to elevate somebody on a satellite team, uh, like like a Crutchlow would be an obvious thing. Well, and not, I, I, I not could go see outside, that they're not going to go outside the series. I could see if Crutch, I could see if they were saying Pedros is done for the season to elevate Crutchlow. But I can't see taking him away from LCR Honda for two or three races and then throwing him back. Oh, I can't. I, I, to me, that would be... A tease? It would be a tease. It the, would L- be, the LCR Honda bikes are not bad at all. They, they, I'm not they, saying they, they're they, bad, but it also screws up Yeah, I will say it screws them up. It screws it screws up both teams in the, in the long run. I think, right. uh, obviously, I, I, I got to imagine the, word, the words, I'm taking a few weeks off, weren't out of Danny Pedrosa's mouth before... HRC Honda was calling uh, Casey Stoner's wife, asking if he could come out and play. Uh, I don't think there's any question. Well, it's, I don't know if they actually contacted him, but I will. I will bet if they didn't. I, I, shame I will. I will, bet, I will bet. Within, yeah, I will bet within a few minutes that conversation took place at HRC. Oh yeah, I, I bet they were that, saying, "What can we do for Casey Stoner's wife to let him come play?" Yeah, but she's already given in to him racing. He, he like Warren had said, he's scheduled to race at Suzuka in uh, the summer. Yeah, but uh, not a season of racing. Yeah, well that. That's true, there's but she's letting him difference. race. There's a big difference between racing and racing and, a season. No, there's a big difference between racing and doing test d- development riding, which is what he's been doing for Honda. She might have said, "Yeah, no racing," because racing is a whole lot more. You know, when you're bit battling against other people, there's a lot more opportunities for you to go down. I, I don't ever think it was that. I thought she always complained about he wasn't home. I don't think so. Yeah, I thought that she traveled. Went, she traveled even with the baby with him. So, well, so. I thought that was his big thing when he retired. When he quote retired was that to spend more time at home with his family. Well, that's what he said. That's what right, they, and, that's what and I'm sure that said. came but from the her. Tr- the truth is, the truth is, and he actually even said it himself. He didn't like the direction the MotoGP was yeah, going. Yeah, and 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 would he be willing to come back? I mean, if he is now, all of a sudden, I could say there's another Honda I think can now win. Um, he, here's here's why I'd say it's a possibility. Okay. Number one, um, because he's had to listen to all this press about Mark Marquez the last two seasons. Oh, yeah. Can okay, I be that's definitely do that. Listen. The other thing, too, is because his a V8 supercar's career went so crappy, I think there's a oh, real... Oh, he had one? Yes, oh, exactly. Oh, sorry. I think, which was sort of what, what was going to give... You know, you're a racer. You want that racing feeling. And when that didn't happen, he's going to miss that, which is probably why he signed up for Suzuka. He was probably approached. It's on a Honda. Yep. Right. And so he's got HRC behind him there. Um, I think... He would let's put it this way. He'll at least think about it. A lot of people in the in the pool say there's no way that he'll ever that Casey will ever come back. But I'm not say, writing that out I, until I, I read it I, in the press. I think release. it's a stretch. I agree. I think it's a stretch, but I would not say it won't happen. So you're thinking? I think he might off. come up for. I personally I think he'll come up for at least one race. Stoner. I think he'll be out. Oh, for at least if one he gets race. one race, that's it's over with. It's a, there's Pedroza will never get his seat back. Yeah. If if Casey gets one day, one day on that seat, he has it as long as he can perform on it. Yeah, there's no there's no way, and, that, and that's, there's, that's there's no way you're gonna unseat Casey Stoner over Danny Pedrosa, who has proven that he's basically mediocre. Yeah, well, I mean Pedrosa got a lot of wins, but he's not a not, not a lot. He's had some wins. What twenty six? Not all those in the GP class. Okay, that's so a good point. he yeah no no um but look I picked Pedroza Pedroza's a good racer but he ain't no Casey Stoner no and and he's not and and but I also I I, I don't agree with breaking up the LCR Honda teams to move the, him up for the bike unless it's for the rest of the if you said Pedroza's gone for the rest of the year then Crutchlow or Redding and I would say it would be Crutchlow over Redding yeah I would agree with that uh, well, if he gets the surgery. It, like we're speculating, if if he can get if he the gets surgery, a doctor next surgery, then he's not coming back. No, he no, will. And yeah. that's ten weeks uh, no, recovery time. Was it even ten weeks? I, I don't even think. We, I mean, we, we had Heron on the yeah, show when he Josh, had it. This is Josh, the second Josh, one though, so it's going to take a little longer. I, I don't. I think if he gets the surgery, you could see him back in three or four rounds. But I don't think time. that's. I don't think that's. I, I mean, I don't think. Okay, well, I don't think arm pump is Danny's only problem. Oh no, Dan, Danny's only problem is. I think Danny's problem. Is he pump. saw his. Two years ago, he saw his only chance at a championship fade from between his eyes, and I think it's give a damn's busted. I think so. It's too. a paycheck. I think so too, and that's also my speculation about about 
about Lorenzo. Yeah, I, I definitely think I mean, Yamaha I mean, has developed that that bike for more Rossi. It's their 60th year, giving Rossi maybe, his 10th but championship, but letting him go out on the sun. Before we read too much into it, okay, in, into in, into it, I, I I tell you, and I, I believe this wholeheartedly, if, well, number one, Pedroza needs to get out of the way because Marquez, basically his charge of the field, t- tells you that if he didn't have his little ex- his little excursion off the track that he had there, he probably would have dominated he probably won race the race by a long shot. Shoulda, woulda, couldn't. That's why they race. Well, I understand that's one of the reasons well, why they race. One of the race. biggest things but about racing, but you can't anytime say... you talk to a racer, they'll mm-hmm. always tell you the most important thing is to stay on the track. Absolutely. Until you can stay on the track, speculation's out the okay, window. Okay, he didn't go off the track on his own accord. It doesn't matter. Well, yeah, it does. Doesn't matter. He wasn't on the well, track. Well, you can you can mow people over and try and hope. Hopefully, you don't wreck and get killed. No, I'm just saying. I'm just saying that. Uh, well, that's... whatever the case may be, I'm just saying. If if you if you look at it, I would think that probably the Ducatis were thrilled to see Mark Marquez at the back of the field. I think yeah. the entire field was. Yeah, I don't. I I mean, yeah, but I the Yamaha wanted the the Ducatis to be there too. Yeah. Well, obviously, but right. you know. It's kind of hard when your guy is going, oh, I'm co- I can't see out my one eye as he's riding around. Okay, well, I, who won Coda last year? Marquez. Yeah, but who won it two years ago? Lorenzo. And who's been second the last two years and won this year is Rossi. So, I arguably, I'd say the Yamahas in the last three years have done better at Qatar than the Hondas. Okay, well, you then I think you should go ahead and pick one of those two. I can tell you I right did. Now. I picked the Yamaha. No, no, I'm talking about for Coda. I'll tell you right now, I'm picking Marquez and Coda. I know you're picking Marquez and Coda. I, I'm considering the Vicioso because the Ducatis are fast and you got two big, long straightaways there. Wow, and I, Phil, and that's a lot of crow for you to swallow. That's a lot of crow for me to swallow. Until until not as much as you buying me the free five guys you still yeah, Until me. I saw this you race, had it I, today. Was the, I was 100% on Marquez for Coda as well, but... After seeing those guys run those straights, oh man, that's is. It's I, tough I'm now. thinking about the Ducati but as you well. You didn't see the Ducati against the Honda. Y- you pen- didn't, no, because the Honda couldn't get there. No, no, because the Pedro- because Pedroza wasn't was on the. The Honda, Honda couldn't <laughs> get there. Neither one. Rossi, at least Rossi and Lorenzo were there. That's true. I, I, I you know, except for La- Rossi had a horrible, horrible race there last year. Mm-hmm. He, he wouldn't be a bad pick for Coda. I mean, I'm thinking podium. We'll see. I, 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 the the I, Ducatis I can't will run right by him on the straights. Well, the Ducatis are going to run by everybody on the street. The, the, the Ducatis, if, if the, the Ducatis can bring the speed that they had at Qatar, they'd run by an F1 car on the streets at Coda. Maybe. I mean, they are fast. Maybe, but I, I don't think anybody can, can carry the corner speed that Marquez can carry on that Honda. I just don't believe that right now. I, I, I don't think the Yamaha is good because not, the seamless transmission in the Yamaha, the Yamaha riders themselves say it's nowhere near as good as the Honda. I, and I'm not, I'm not arguing that fact, right. but you just have to stay up on twos. To, you have to stay on the track to, to get the time. Yeah, which most of the time he does. Most of the time. Oh, yeah, he can wreck most and practice for all you know. Yep, that's true. Anyways, I think that about wraps it up. We did our speculation. Who knows? You come back in a week, watch the video, make fun of us. Give us your. I'll tell you what. In the comment section, put in who you think it is. Next week we're gonna have a little bit of free time. We'll we'll, uh, we'll put a we'll mention and give our thoughts about who you are. I I made a big plea for Jake Kanye. He was very happy with that on Twitter. Uh, you know, I said since he's going to be there anyways, and he's a, he's an American and already done testing there, it would work. And he's an American. Uh, I guess that about wraps it up here for our uh, MotoGP wrap-up. We are going to do our power rankings for Supercross and for MotoGP in separate videos coming up next.